Without much fanfare, this past January 17, Capture One released a pretty significant update to its mobile app for iPhone and iPad, which now has AI object masking, also called assisted masking by Capture One. In this video, we're going to be running through four new features and whether this new version now surpasses Lightroom Mobile as the best mobile raw editing app. So let's run through the four new features, starting with the big one, object masking. Capture One becomes the first mobile raw editor to include AI object masking in both iPhone and iPad apps. Yes, in case you didn't know, Adobe Lightroom Mobile, which has been the longtime leader in masking, which was the first to implement AI masking in mobile via its subject sky and background masking, doesn't have object selection in its mobile app as it does in its desktop counterpart. Whether it is because Adobe is intentionally crippling its mobile app to encourage users to go for its pricier desktop plan or any technical limitations, it's quite an achievement for Capture One to introduce such a major feature ahead of Adobe. And major feature object masking certainly is. Previously, the only way to select a specific object was to perform tedious and error-prone brushing with an Apple Pencil. Well, object masking changes all that. To use it, you can either choose tap to select or draw to select. I'll choose tap to select. I'll drag the circle over the object. A clever UI implementation to mimic a mouse. As you can see, Capture One will automatically give a rough preview of what object has been selected covering it with a light red overlay. A nice touch. To confirm the selection, I'll tap the circle. And with that, the overlay turns a vivid red. As I'm done with the masking, I'll tap Done. As you can see, a new layer has been created. Adjusting the exposure, it's clear that the adjustments are now limited to just the selection. Next, let's attempt to mask the face. Unfortunately though, as you can see here, tap to select has difficulty discerning a specific part of the face, incorrectly masking the entire head. Given this limitation with tap to select, let's try its alternative object masking tool, draw to select. With draw to select, you select an object via dragging a rectangle around the object rather than tapping. I'll select the eyes to brighten it. I'll select the lips to increase the saturation. I'll select the face and the hair. As you can see, Draw to Select is not only just as easy to use, but allows you to target objects a lot more precisely than Tap to Select. And for that reason, I prefer it over Tap to Select. As a bonus, both of its object masking tools handles the complex hair edges like a champion where most other raw editors would struggle. So that was object masking. Let's move on to the next new feature, which I like to call automatic object masking. And this includes tools like Select Subject and Select Background, which auto-detects objects rather than needing to be specified via manual input. To demonstrate, let's brighten the subject in this image. I'll tap Select Subject. And with just one tap, you get a pretty accurate selection, which smartly takes into account the hair's edges. Next, I'll darken the background. Once again, a pretty precise result. Next, let's see this example, which is in low light and has very tough, low contrast edges that can easily confuse automated masking tools. As you can see, it's handled beautifully by Capture One. Nor has Capture One any problem with soft fur, as in this example. So as you can see, both select subject and background are very reliable and produces similar quality to its desktop app. The third new feature is masking interoperability. One nice feature of Capture One Mobile's masking 
is its object masking tools can be used to refine other masking types. To demonstrate, let's lower the brightness in the sky with a linear gradient. I'll add in the gradient. Unfortunately though, the head is sticking out of the horizon and that will be included in any adjustment, which is not what we want. No problem, let's use object masking to refine the selection. With the draw to select button highlighted, I'll choose the erase mode. By the way, when prompted to rasterize the gradient mask, I'll simply accept it. I'll drag a rectangle around the head to deselect it. And there you go, a more precise adjustment affecting just the sky excluding the lady's head. The fourth new feature is an improved brushing workflow. As a reminder, in the previous masking brush implementation, Capture One had a confusing system where you had to tap either the Add or Subtract button each time you lifted the Apple Pencil or your finger off the screen. And that could be a lot of times, a super annoying and tedious process. And I mentioned as much in my last review. Well, the good news is this step is gone. The brushing is now much smoother and more intuitive as you can see here. So there you go, four new features in Capture One Mobile. As you can see, the new object masking feature moves the mobile experience closer than ever to the desktop app while making it a serious alternative to Lightroom Mobile. But is it better than Lightroom Mobile? Well, if you perform a lot of local adjustments and require more sophisticated masking tools, I would say yes. Not only is the masking interface extremely intuitive and well-designed, the overall quality produced is very high matching the performance of the desktop app. On the other hand, if masking is not critical in your workflow, then Lightroom Mobile with its own unique features like select sky, support for luminosity masking, ability to create a background bokeh, and support for generative erase, all of which Capture One Mobile lacks, might be the better app for you. In any case, this increased innovation from Capture One is great news for customers this update will almost certainly spur Adobe to finally integrate object selection into its own app to move it back into the lead which it has enjoyed for years. So let me know what you think of this update. Which mobile RAW editor do you think is better? The new Capture One Mobile or Lightroom Mobile? Write it down in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.